Hey guys, this is Sharad with We Simply. In this video, I'm going to show you what does the flow look like from the time you get a new lead all the way to the time you get it under contract and you get, you get it sold. If you like this video, please like it, share and subscribe. So let's get right into it. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you uh, a chart that I put together. So um, it's a little bit complicated, but I'll walk you through and you'll see uh, what I've done. So I, I've taken like the marketing that we're doing in our business, PPC, SEO, uh, direct mail, SMS marketing, cold calling. So what I've done is <clears throat> if you get a new lead from either PPC or SEO, I'm assuming this is a web form, it will go into a no, no contact made bucket because you haven't made contact with that lead yet. And if you get uh, an incoming call from your direct mail, SMS marketing, or cold calling, you're going to get that into your, uh, either the call is going to be forwarded to you or the call is going to be routed to your answering service, which is the case for us. We use call portal. So let's say the incoming call is answered. Then what's going to happen is it's going to go into contact mate because somebody from call portal is going to get that information. If the call wasn't answered, uh, let's say if the caller calls and hangs up before somebody at call porter picks up, then it goes into no contact mate. So when you initially get a lead, it either goes into contact mate or no contact mate, depending on whether you answer the call or not. So this is what it will look like in Free Simply. Uh, so you have your leads, either they're coming into no contact mate, if you haven't made contact or it's a web lead from your PPC or SEO. And if you've actually talked to that lead, then it will come into your contact mate bucket. So then the next step would be for your lead manager or somebody on your team to qualify the lead. So you get the lead come in and then you're going to go through the lead detail based on the notes that you have, based on the information that the seller provided, whether it's a qualified lead or not. So lead manager qualifies the lead. And after that, the if the lead is qualified the next step would be to make an appointment if not then you would move it to agent referral uh, if it's worth agent referral so this is what it will look like let's say if i go into this lead from lebron james i'm going to review it see if there's any information um, and if this is a good lead the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and i'm going to move it to appointment side Let's say I'm going to mark everybody's task completed. I'm going to create a new appointment. Seller appointment with LeBron James. And let's say I'm going to go in this appointment and the appointment is going to be on 31st. I'm going to choose 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. I'm going to make this appointment. So in this case, my property moved from contact made to appointment set, which you will see, oops, which you'll see here. So qualified lead. I moved it to appointment set. And let's look at another case of, um, I have another lead, this one right here, Bill Gates. Let's say I review my lead information. This is not a qualified lead. You know, either it's uh, the seller is asking too much. Let's say in this case, the estimated value is 2.8 million and Bill Gates is asking 5 million for the house, right? We're gonna say, no, it doesn't work. The next step of the process would be, it's not a qualified lead. The next thing we're going to see it, is it worth referring to an agent? So let's say in this case, I'm going to say, yes, this is worth referring to an agent. So this is what we do in our business. I'll go here. I'll say agent, oops, agent referral. Okay. So I will add this tag. I'll add the tag right here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move it to a warm lead. Warm lead means it's not on my active leads. It's in the back burner. Somebody, uh, you know, will send it to information to our agent. The agent will work on it. And I'm going to take, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a task for somebody on my team to follow up with the agent. Follow up with the agent. If this is something we will be getting referral fee on, for example, I'm going to assign it to myself. And I'm going to create a task. Okay. Oops. Actually, let me make this for like 45 days. Let me say mid March. 
So, you know, I'll follow up how the appointment went. I'll go back to my leads. So agent referral, yes. And then let's say if there was another lead, we're gonna go into Michael Jordan. That's another lead. You know, we looked at it. Uh, it doesn't qualify. There is, you know, no way we can make this happen. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it to dead lead. So I'm gonna go de do this, dead lead. And then I'm gonna put some information why I'm moving it to dead lead. Let's say it needs too much work. And, uh, you know, there's some zoning issues, for example. So I'm gonna move it to dead lead. The property is gonna get out of my uh, active leads board and move to dead lead. So I come back to my leads and I'll continue the flow. So let's say I have this property. Uh, so we've done this, moving a property to warm lead or dead lead. Let's say I set an appointment for this property with LeBron James. And the next step would be, so we go, the appointment date and time comes. The next step would be, did the appointment happen? So you'll notice in this business, there will be number of times where the seller does not show up. They cancel the appointment or they are just completely missing in action. So if that is the case, what you do is you put them on a no-show drip campaign. So you basically go right here. You're going to put them on a drip campaign. You would have, um, you know, whatever drip campaign you want to call. Let's say, you know, this is miss call drip, for example. And then I'll put them on this trip campaign. And then what would happen is uh, we would send them reminders, uh, text message, uh, emails, if you have their email address. And then somebody on our team would also be responsible for calling them to make sure we can reschedule that appointment with them. So we do that if the appointment does not happen. Let's say in this case, appointment does happen. Uh, so, you know, we go on an appointment, uh, we make an offer on the next step would be, uh, did we make, we will make an offer on the property appointment went good. Let's say appointment went good. The next step would be make an offer on the property. And let's say if the offer gets accepted for us. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this property to under contract. So offer is accepted. What I'm going to do is let's say our offer price was $1.5 million dollars. We made the offer, uh, let's say today, and it went under contract today, and it went under contract for there was some negotiation, and we are gonna close on, let's say, Feb 15, okay? So now the property has moved to under contract right here. However, if the offer were not accepted, I go back into my appointment set, and let's say if the offer were not accepted, and then the next step would be, does the seller need more time to think about the property? If the answer is yes, let's say the seller needs more time, then what we will do is we'll take this, we'll move it to offer made. I'm gonna mark all these tasks completed and we'll say we made an offer of 1.5 million today and it's gonna sit in an offer made bucket and then we'll add it to another drip campaign uh, of offer made just so that, you know, we're following up. It, it could just simply be reminder of somebody in a team to follow up with Yogi Bear, uh, you know, every couple of days, just to make sure that, you know, if Yogi Bear has any questions uh, about the offer that you made. And if the seller does not need time to think about it, which basically means most of the time it's a dead lead, then you would just move it to dead lead at that point. And, um, Coming back to a property that let's say you have under contract with LeBron James, the next step would be if this is a wholesale deal, the next thing you would do is you would move it, you would send it to your cash buyers, uh, you send this listing to your cash buyers, and if you get a good price offer, then you move it to assign to buyer, and then once the transaction happens, you close the property. But if you do not get a good offer on the property, so let's say in this case we made an offer of 1.5. We have it under contract for 1.6 million. Now the goal with this would be that we are gonna wholesale this property. So at least we would wanna make, let's say 50,000 in this price range. So we would want at least $1.65 million offer. If we do not get that, then you know we rene renegotiate the contract with the seller. And if the seller comes down on the price, then we send the cash listing to uh, our buyers again. If not, then we move it to dead lead, okay? So let's say in this case, uh, the seller, you know, we have it under contract. So we get an offer from our buyer for 1.7 million. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it to assign to buyer. 
and I'm gonna say this is we got an assignment fee of 100,000 on this. And uh, let's say, you know, we got the contract today, same date, uh, but of course you would put whatever date that this is actually happening. And then after that, once you have it assigned to buyer, then you have the transaction closing on Feb 15. Then what's gonna happen on Feb 15, the transaction is gonna close the buyer that you have for this property. So you would add the buyer uh, right here. Uh, let's say this is, uh, let's see if I have somebody added. Uh, no, so I'm just gonna add Iron Man. Okay, and Iron Man at recently.com. So I'm gonna add this contact. So then what would happen on Feb 15th is Iron Man is gonna close on this property on Feb 15th and we would get our assignment fee of $100,000 and the seller LeBron James would get 1.5 million and Iron Man would pay 1.6 million, 1.5 of which would go to LeBron James and 100,000 would come to us. Again, this is assuming there's no closing cost, but of course the amounts would be different. Uh, and then once the transaction has closed, then what you would do is you would take it and you would move this property to sold. And then you would say, you know, if nothing changed, assignment fee was 100,000. This was uh, a wholesale deal. And, you know, the contract close date would be, let's say, you know, I'm gonna just put 31st. And then that's it, the transaction has moved to sold at this point. Uh, so this is a very simple flow of what happens from the time you get a new lead into your pipeline from different marketing channels, all the way to getting under contract and getting it sold. I hope you guys like the video. Uh, if you like it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. We'll be more than happy to answer those. Thank you.